Hi everyone and welcome to the Storage Review Lab. I'm Brian Beeler. Today we're putting together a QNAP NAS for a giveaway. It's the TSX77 series, uh, powered by AMD inside, 16 gig of RAM, two PCI expansion ports on the back. Uh, this guy has a lot of flexibility and a lot of power. We're putting this together for our friends over at the VMware subreddit. We're starting out with four four terabyte HGST drives. So these have already been loaded in their trays. QNAP thankfully uses these quick release uh, trays that make it very easy to load up S SSDs and hard drives rather than the old screw methodology that uh, uh, most of these NAS vendors used to use. We're also gonna put together another group with these eight terabyte Seagate archive units. So we've got 16 terabytes raw for primary storage. We've got another 16 raw for backup. So you can configure that uh, in a number of different ways depending on what your needs are. The lucky winner of this NAS is also gonna get some flash to go with it. Again, with these really nice, easy to use trays, a pair of 480 gig Micron M500 DC SSDs. Now QNAP supports these both as caching and tiering uh, but they can also be set up as a flash volume for someone that really wants to drive some fun I.O. out of this system. We're going to go ahead and get him plugged in now and use the software tools QNAP provides to discover the system and show you how we configure the storage. So what we've done is shifted over to the browser and we know the IP address from the system itself. It has a nice little display on it. And we've just typed that in and QNAP loads automatically their Start Smart installation guide. As we go through this, it's a very simple process to get the QNAP configured and online. It'll start with a default name uh, and an admin user account. We'll put in a very secure password here. Make sure that we don't tell anybody what it is. And then we'll go down and select time zone. We're in Cincinnati, which is currently Eastern time. Carrying on the network configuration, you can set up a static here. If not, uh, DHCP is already picked up the dot 14 address in our lab. So we'll carry on again. Uh, another little step is you can set up the file transfer services. We'll leave those default settings in place. And now we get to the disk configuration. We're going to do that later, but uh, you can always go back and change the settings. There's another multimedia setting that we can blow past, and now we go ahead and apply these changes. Now, as we're waiting, the system will refresh as it's getting set up, and it will go through its uh, application of the settings. And there we have it. A few minutes later, the system is done updating and it's ready to use. So we go in, type in our password, and off we go. Now once inside the uh, system will prompt you for many of the first-time user buttons and hotspots, but what we're mostly concerned about is just making sure that all of our storage has come online properly, and we can do that by drilling in to the storage system where it'll want us to configure all sorts of goodness. So as we see here, all of our, our SSDs, our disks are all showing up, which is always a good start. Everyone shows good and healthy. 
One thing that uh, is also exciting about this system is that you can see there are two M.2 slots uh, available on the inside of the system. So whoever gets a hold of this can further expand their flash capacity with those as well. So now this thing's all ready to go. We're going to box it up and uh, get ready to give it away. So good luck to everyone who participates. This will make a surely a very fine partner for anyone that's learning or messing with vSphere or any of the other virtualization capabilities this box has to offer.